Let's bring in now another voice who thinks maybe September could bring more smiles to investors, but the risk may be after that. That is the aforementioned Tom Lee, the head of research at Fundstrack Global Advisor, CBC contributor, and his nearly daily note, a must read. As many people know Tom on social media, I cite a lot of your stuff, especially at night. We're talking about COVID and the trends there. You and tireless Ken doing a great job. So you've heard our historical conversation, Marie Antoinette aside, what is mm -hmm. your take on history, market trends, and where we may be headed or beheaded? Uh, ooh, beheaded, <laughs> scary. Um, uh, I I think it, nice. Uh, I think markets uh, can alarm everybody because we're already up twenty percent year to date, and we're still in a pandemic. Um, but the underlying fundamentals are still really strong, and I think there's a lot of pent up demand. So. One thing that makes me constructive is we are making a lot of highs in August, and I think those stats are very pertinent, but it's coming at a time of great caution. Um, most of our clients uh, kind of agree with what everyone's saying here. You know, we're, we're extended and it's overbought and nothing's cheap. And as you know, when people are looking for a top, that's really when markets can surprise you because we're in the midst of a wall of worry. So I, I'm in the camp that September probably surprises people because uh, even though the seasonal say we're down in September, whenever the market's up greater than 13% in the first half, September actually is one of the strongest months of the year. So I think we, we could actually have a pretty dramatic rally in September in the midst of a wall of worry because obviously there's a lot of things to worry about. Yeah, you know, and, and so this stat that we're showing here, there's two ways to look at it. September has the worst average since 1945 down six tenths of one percent but as josh brown pointed out on halftime report today tom that that number can be a little bit misconstrued yes if you say that's okay september is the worst month it's generally because that's when we've had the biggest massive drop so in other words it tends to do okay say nine out of ten years but the problem is that tenth year that it doesn't has such a big drop it screws with all the averages right we know how averages work sure you also have a price target on the S&P 500 that I think is basically a, not a target, but September, you think, has the highest number versus the year in. In other words, do you think the market will make its highs for the year next month? Uh, that, that's a possibility. Um, so I think, you know, our year end target is 4,600 for the S&P. And I think we could we'll be touching close to 4,650 this month in September. But... Uh, the reason I, I think it's a possibility is that, you know, there are some headwinds developing. You know, one is the eviction and mortgage moratoriums ending. So we, we have to see how how this really plays out in the economy. But, you know, there, there are going to be people who become, you know, homeless. And then we don't know how the fall wave uh, looks for COVID, although, uh, you know, the base case is still that this wave that we're in the midst is really the wave through the fall. So this is the worst. And if that's the case, the market can extend the rally. But those are two uncertainties. And of course, the third is the Fed potentially tapering. And, you know, it, it despite what I think a lot of people think is uh, the market's priced it in, I don't think so. I think there'd be quite a lot of turbulence once the tapering takes place. So there's a lot of things to worry about after September. But I think in the month, in the September that we're facing now, I think people are cautious. They think we're going to have a drawdown. Uh, Counter seasonals, you know, whenever markets are strong in the first half, September is actually one of the best months up two thirds of the time. And it's one of the strongest uh, in terms of median gain. So I, I think that that's why we could add at least 100 points in this month. Hey, Tom's Tim. So positioning wall of worry are reasons why you're constructive on September. You've talked about pent up demand and, and just, you know, overall where you still think that there's uh, major tailwinds. But you know, small caps, IWM, uh, when you look at industrials and, and even transports and, and even some of the names that are the most cyclical in whether it's industrial or energy, um, they haven't performed. Uh, we've been expressing our concern around the, the, the lack of breadth and that the NASDAQ has really been about five stocks. Um, how do you reconcile that if the world is such a decent place to, to be investing more broadly? Uh, yes, uh, our, our team's been looking at it under the hood, and including Tireless Ken, who just had a baby today. Um, congratulations to Ken. But uh, congrats. Yeah. Wow. There's one measure to, of strength, which is the percentage of stocks above the 50 day and their 200 day. So they're both in a positive short term and long term trend. And the groups that you're mentioning, the cyclicals, the, you know, the industrials, 
the materials energy, they're the ones showing the biggest gain. So I think that they're actually coming back into trend, more stocks within energy. So even though the energy index is down, there's actually growing strength. And if you look at the S&P 500 advanced decline line, that made a new high coincident with S&P new highs. So it was not an index led by large caps. This was a broad participation. And in fact, you know, comparing the July highs to the August highs, most of those gains were posted by uh, epicenter stock. So I, I think that you've had broadening participation, even though Fang is rallying. And, and again, we like Fang because you know many of these things like Amazon, Apple, Netflix, they're they're trailing yeah. the market year to date. I think they're going to catch up into year end. So I, I kind of like everything. I think it's an everything rally. And, and very quickly though, because I will wait for the uh, the new note. By the way, congrats to Tireless Ken. Well, he's going to test that Tireless if he just had a baby <laughs> as well and the, and his family on, on that on that birth. <laughs> uh, I saw a headline that COVID cases down ten thousand on a seven day average from the last rolling week as well. There are some positive, I know it's tough. I know there's a lot of people suffering, but there are some positive trends we are seeing. Are there not? Quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely, Brian. You know, uh, one of the things is Delta's so contagious and transmissible and it's scary, but it has been playing out in roughly 50 days in every region it infects. And Florida is a great example. Florida, across almost all the counties now, cases are rolling hard. And, and we're seeing that in, in many of the states like Missouri, Alabama, uh, you know, Louisiana, which, of course, you know, has been hit hard by the hurricane. So I think you're seeing more states experience that rollover. And hopefully, if that continues to play out, COVID is retreating in the U.S. And that would be a good news story. Yeah, well, let's hope that certainly is the path. Tom Lee, we'll look forward to the note tonight. Always a must read. Congrats to Ken. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, all Great, right, uh, Karen, let's let's trade this and, and we'll start with you. We've talked to you a little bit about energy. Tom's been bullish. Mm -hmm. It hasn't played out as well maybe as he'd hoped in the last couple of months. Oil stocks just seem to not be able to get out of their own way as well. Are you a believer in anything in the energy space? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I am. I don't have a ton of exposure, but I have some OIH because I just sort of wanted broad exposure. I know that balance sheets are better than they have been. And um, so collectively, the, the, the space is in better shape. But I just wanted sort of a more of a sentiment change. So I do have some exposure in, in OIH, but uh, it's not a big position. Yeah, and to Tom's point, he talks about the OIH a lot, that the price oil is here. OIH is there and something is disconnected. Karen, thank you very much.